So who made it into this week's top 10? Well, oddly enough, it was not Convivi or Tiger Woods getting charged with the DUI or the Giants and Nationals and their bench-clearing brawl. But we'll talk about the 10 best stories that you guys said were best. We got the most response from you out there around the world. And a bunch of them we think are pretty cool on the back end. This is the weekly wrap-up podcast for the week ending June 3rd, 2017. And welcome to the podcast. My name is Jake Levin Payne. I'm your moderator at ThisIsTheConversation.com and the man who puts together these podcasts, both the five daily recap podcasts and the weekly wrap-up, the Saturday morning edition, where we go through everything we talked about over the week and give you the top ten, the ones that got the most responses, and then some that we thought were pretty interesting, but obviously didn't get the vote counts. We can thank you so much for joining us for all the great conversations. You can help in the voting by just going to our websites and our social media sites and responding and reacting to what we have out there. On Facebook, you can find us at This Is A Conversation. On Twitter, it is TH underscore conversation. And, of course, the main website where you can respond and do what you want to the same stories there, This Is A Conversation dot com. On the website, we also have a link for you to join our conversation survey panel, which means if you join the panel, we will try our best to send you some sponsored surveys and some sometimes not sponsored surveys, but a sponsored survey means you get paid for it. You fill it out, you get paid for it. Seriously, just like that. Plus, we have our own way to help pay things around in place, and that's sponsors. We want you to check out our great sponsors and see if one of our great uh, sponsors can help you get something done right now. If they can help take care of a pain you have, we will gladly uh, put you in place with them and hopefully give you a great discount as well. So let's get on with this thing. Let's start off with the top ten in backwards order or from ten to one ascending order, descending order. Um, from least to most, I guess. The tenth most requested, required, talked about, yacked about, conversated about, impressed, engaged story of the week happens to be one that surprises that it sneaked in uh, so high in the last minutes. This is about a fan, a real superhero in his own, who stepped in at London's Comic Con to keep two major superpowers from colliding, from clashing, from duking out. There was almost a fight between the Incredible Hulk and Flash Gordon. Sam Jones, who played Flash Gordon in the movies from the 80s that had all the great music from Queen, and the Incredible Hulk being Lou Ferrigno, who played the Hulk in the 70s and 80s in the TV show The Incredible Hulk with Bill Bixby. That, and that being, of course, Lou Ferrigno. I think I already said that, though. Anyway, they were seated next to each other in an autograph room, and they apparently weren't having any of each other. And it got to where there was a bit of a scuffle, a bit of some words were said to really, really tall dudes that stared each other down. And a short dude, a guy around 5'7", stepped in to break it up. Now remember, Sam Jones and Lou Ferrigno are both all, all over 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and this little dude stepped in at the Comic-Con to say, Hey guys, we're all superheroes. We're all fighting for good and justice. We should you know, knock this thing off. I think he just said, hey, guys, we should just knock this thing off. And they took their sides and moved on with life and signed some more autographs. And they were not put next to each other for the rest of the series. The number 10 story for the week. Number 9 goes to Angela Merkel, who says that Germany can no longer rely on the U.S. under Donald Trump's leadership. Now, after last weekend's big meetings with Donald Trump had with everybody, first going to the Middle East, then to Israel, then to NATO, and then to the G7 summit, um, Donald Trump left a lot of people baffled that were supposed to be his allies, his boys, his posse. Uh, Angela Merkel, who right now is emerging as essentially the the leader of the free world, or at least doing a pretty good job of trying to be that person, uh, basically said in a speech, not in a tweet, in a speech before actual people, that because of the un... well, just... Just because of Donald Trump, just the way you can't figure out what he's doing at any point in time, it's hard to follow the United States and what they're going to do and how they're going to respond to things. And it's hard to figure out whether they will have their back, them being Germany specifically and Europe uh, in, in a whole, on any conflicts. This also got tossed off to the U.K. as well. So Great Britain not exactly getting a lot of love from Angela Merkel as well. But basically, she's putting down the gauntlet. She's saying that the continent of Europe minus the U.K., the actual physical continent of Europe, 
may have to focus on doing things on their own. And Germany themselves specifically may have to focus on the Germans being the leaders of things there as opposed to expecting the United States to be there in their wake. We will see how that actually works out on the world stage. More stories on that to kind of jump into that one. The number eight story is Kathy Griffin, so we don't get away from Donald Trump. The story we have here in the eighth spot is that Kathy Griffin apologizes for Trump beheading photo. Um, the whole firestorm started earlier in the week when Kathy Griffin decided she was going to do a provocative photo shoot. No problem with that. The photo shoot that made it provocative was her standing there in a cold stare holding the beheaded bloody head of Donald Trump. Not the actual beheaded bloody head of Donald Trump, mind you, but a, fe- a, f- a facsimile, a fake bloody head. Nobody liked it. Nobody got the joke. Oddly enough, Baron Trump saw the pictures and thought his dad had actually been beheaded by Kathy Griffin on TV, which brings in whole other issues of things. Uh, but the whole thing was in poor taste, and everyone basically denounced it. She had to later apologize the day as they were released. Later in the, the day, that day or the next day, CNN officially fired her from its coverage um, of the in, of the New Year's Eve show. So her and Anderson Cooper are no longer a TV couple uh, doing the shenanigans. Uh, as I've said all week long in talking about this story, I don't think she's funny. So that means maybe I'll watch CNN for New Year's Eve or maybe I'll go to bed at 930 like I normally do anyway. Uh, she lost some endorsements and we'll see what happens with anything else in her line of work. I don't know if Life in the D-List is even on air anymore, but I'm sure there'll be some issues with that if it actually is. And still sticking with Trump, number seven is Trump is saying that the leaks that go out there, most of them are just fabricated lies. That's a quote made up by the fake news, the quote media. Now, this is something he said coming back from uh, his big trip, coming back from Europe. Uh, He's basically stating that most of the leaks that are coming out there, most of the things we're finding out about what's going on inside the White House that we think are not so great, aren't so much leaks. It's just that the fake news media, the people in charge of making things up, or I should say uh, providing information on things, are making things up and then circling back around and counting it as fact when, in fact, it's not. Although we're finding out that most of these things are fact and the sources that get claimed are just essentially uh, doing their best to put a check in what's going on. What we have in a situation in Washington, D.C. is a uh, just a place where a lot of people who are working in the government forever have a new boss who's never done government stuff before. And not only is he not doing things sort of the quote unquote right, right way. He's not even doing things the right legal way to get things done. He's not just ruffling feathers. He's really messing things up. And the people there can do one of two things, or one of three things. They can flat out quit. They can flat out mutiny. Or they can let people know a little insider things, what's going on, and kind of keep things in line. They could come be full-blown whistleblowers. That's possible. In that case, is, but in that case, they're essentially quitting as well. So they can just basically, if everybody in the department quit, uh, that would put a pretty good symbol that something's wrong. However, everything being done by the department will come to a halt, and people who think their jobs are important and, of course, need to pay the bills aren't just going to quit on principle. It's a very hard thing to do. Going to the number six story of the day, this was a uh, pretty big one indeed. And this one turned out to be something that uh, hit me personal. I found out I had a friend, a buddy, who was still in the Air Force serving at the embassy in Kabul, uh, when the rush hour bombing near the embassies killed 80 when we first reported it. Down, it was up to around 92, 93 uh, later in the day as it went through and injured hundreds. A bomb uh, hidden inside of a large tanker truck, which was either a water truck or a sewage truck, something a large tanker truck, uh, drove into the middle of rush hour traffic in Kabul, blew up, and uh, neared some embassies, killing many people. Uh, no one of, I hate to say no one of real importance. It wasn't a, a targeted attack going off against a specific official, but it did hurt many people who were guards, many people who were civilians, and, of course, women and children just getting through their mourning in Kabul. So this hurt, this, this affected me personally because we had a friend over there who was serving at the embassy in Kabul who heard the explosions, felt the explosions, thought at first it was an earthquake, and then saw what it turned into. So he is fine. His family is back in the state, so there's no issues there. But, of course, our thoughts and prayers out to everyone 
dealing with these situations and all the folks who lost lives and lost loved ones in this attack specifically. A federal judge tossed out the terms for the D.C. sniper Lee Boyd Malvo. This is something that popped up late in the week last week. It got into our conversation Friday or Saturday, and mostly because of just its timing. It was able to get a lot of traction and wasn't able to, was able to hold on to its spot right now, sitting at the fifth story. Now, Lee Boyd Malvo was the accomplice, you may remember, from the D.C. sniping from many, many years ago. Many years ago, there was a time uh, back in the day where uh, there was a, a couple of people, a man and um, a, a young man, taking sniper riper, rifles and just killing people, shooting people randomly, more or less, at gas stations or intersections and just stop places across the, or across the D.C. metro. Lee Boyd Malvo, who was a teen at the time, got a life sentence for his, his role in that. So literally, he did pull the trigger on some issues. He no longer has a life term. And so his case is being reassess- reassessed. What happens from here is all what happens here. He's, of course, now 21 and an adult. We'll see where he goes from here based on what happens. The four, the number four story for the week includes this weekend wrap-up from Johnson and Depp. Johnny, Johnny Johnson. Johnny Depp and Dwayne Johnson. I guess you can get those confused with the Johnsons and Johns. Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, opened up with Baywatch over the weekend. Meanwhile, Johnny Depp and um, his crew opened up with Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean, which had what could be seen as a disappointing opening, still trounced Baywatch in the weekend. So more people did want to get to see the fifth installment of Pirates, and we'll see whether it actually will turn to a sixth installment. A lot of this, it was left open-ended in the back, as these things do, but a lot of these things have to do with whether Johnny Depp wants to put on the pirate garb again and how much money this makes overall. It's doing fairly well, basically coming up third of the five movies so far, but they were expecting a bigger open than it had. For Baywatch, it bombed. It didn't do well at all, and it's showing that there is some weariness of the retread of old ideas from the 80s and 90s and made into obvious comedies for that. Baywatch itself was sort of a funny thing to watch, but it was a show, uh, basically an action-adventure drama uh, that was on weekly syndication. started on, on, on regular network TV, remember, NBC. It was a bit too racy for them with the way the swimsuits are wearing. Went to syndication and, of course, did everything it could to revitalize the career of David Hasselhoff, who went ahead to basically smash his career after this was done. Uh, but Baywatch and its ilk, the the stories based on dramas from the 80s, 90s, 70s, chips from the 70s, you could say, that are turned into really silly slaps of comedies, not quite going over so well for people, at least not so far this summer season. The number three story for the week shows a sign of the times as many vineyards across the nation are switching from grapes to marijuana. They're leaving the grape and adding in the leaf the weed, the bud, because many states across the nation are making marijuana legal in some cases uh, in medical versions or in just recreational use, even though the it's still kind of murky on the growth for the federal laws because it's still a federal crime. And grapes and wine just isn't as lucrative as it is. Marijuana becoming a quick cash crop. Uh, while there's so many vineyards, it still is coming hard to distinguish from your local vineyard unless they have a lot of local response to something that has a nationwide care coverage. But local vineries who can't compete against the nationwide packages, especially with the push for uh, a lot of big retail stores who have more wine in their retail stores, can't compete on a local level. So they're going another the route. They're selling pot mostly on a local level, which is making big money right now real fast. One more stop in Russia, and that's when the Russian ambassador told Moscow, and this is how we've learned about the Jared Kushner thing, that Jared Kushner wanted to make the secret communication channels with the Kremlin. We know Jared Kushner became a focus of the FBI investigation into the Russia probe. Um, then we found out what exactly he did. He tried to set up some back channels for communications with Russia uh, inside the Russian embassies, and before President Trump was actually President Trump, right after he was elected, but but well before the actual inauguration. Now, how did we find out about these things? Well, as you've learned over the past couple of months uh, in dealings with Russia, 
we listen into all the conversations that people from Russia have with anyone because you never know what they're talking about. And while we listen to their conversations, while we monitor conversations, in most cases, if their conversations comes up uh, with someone dealing with an American or an ally in some case, that name and that reference is usually masked from the transcripts because in most cases it's just they're talking about a certain person. Unless there's an issue where it seems like they're implicating or bringing someone into some issue. And this is the case here. There was a conversation between a Russian ambassador to his folks in Moscow how he was surprised that Jared Kushner, the son-in-law of the president-elect, was talking to him about setting up the setting up some equipment, Russian equipment, in the Russian embassy so that the president could have discussions with the Kremlin, with Russia, before he was the president. He thought it was kind of weird, and because we, he said that, uh, it was unmasked, it was pulled back, and we found out it was Jared Kushner he was talking about making this thing happen. That's why he is in the news with this in particular. And the number one hot conversation for the week, and this is one that's not surprising, was the evacuation at the Cambridgeshire Zoo uh, from the serious incident when it first came out on the first story. Uh, later in the day, we found out it was a tiger attack and that a zookeeper lost her life in the attack. No other people in the zoo were harmed. No animals were actually uh, released into the wild or, or into the public or anything like that. It was just a a, a, bad, a bad attack, a, a tiger attack that killed one zookeeper. And, of course, our prayers and thoughts go out to that young lady, his family, for having to deal with this tragedy. Those were the top 10 stories that we had conversations on with the best interaction for the week. Here are a batch of the also ands, also rands, also ands. Not quite sure how we're going to call that. We're going to figure it out and have it consistent pretty soon. Olivia Newton John revealed she has a breast cancer diagnosis. She has canceled her current tour. Uh, is It is a return of breast cancer that's come back a bit more aggressive, and she's instantly getting ready for treatment. So we had a, a uh, we had a stop as she was coming here in about a month or so that my wife was actually very interested in going to uh, at a casino about three or four hours away. And, of course, the billboards are still up, but she no longer, of course, coming for that tour. Tiger Woods' arrest did not quite make the top ten, but it, it was the talk of the town on the sports stations, and as this video of his stop went out, it was just an amazing thing watching the fall of a guy who seemingly had it all and in many cases did a lot of the stuff to himself, uh, watching him slur and stutter and stammer on the, on the dash cam as he went through his sobriety test. Of course, he did not fail the sobriety test. Uh, he found no traces of alcohol in the system, so we are going to base this on the drugs he was taking, but it seemed that he was in such a bad case, one would think he would not have gotten in the vehicle as badly as he was. This is turning to a very, very sad story for a young man who had it all for a while. We had many deaths over the weekend. I'm going to read these these next uh, messages basically in the order of their responses and kind of out of the day, so they're not all batched together. But we had the death of Hall of Fame pitcher and congressman and Senator Jim Bunting. Uh, Jim Bunting, I'm sorry, he died at the age of 85. Zygmig Brzezinski, I always say that wrong. Zygmig Brzezinski, I always say that wrong. I said it wrong twice. The National Security Advisor under Jimmy Carter died this weekend as well, uh, last weekend at the age of 89. We had um, John Clayton announcing that he was one of the people fired from ESPN in their big purge a few weeks ago, but he's still doing plenty of work. He has his radio show, his daily radio show, and does some side work as well. We talked about the the stabbing and the train attack in Portland where the man howling racial slurs at some young ladies um, stabbed three men who tried to defend them, killing two of them, injuring one, one in very serious condition still, uh, in just what well, was a freak just thing that happened. The Ariana Grande, Grande Manchester Benefit Concert has been named. There's a date set. It's actually sold out in minutes, and now we're dealing with people with a scalper's market. Some of the other artists on the bill will include Coldplay and Miley Cyrus, and I think Katy Perry may have actually been added to that list since we had this story out. The New York Times opinion pages published a paper um, that stated that the problem, here's the title, the problem isn't food stamps, it's poverty. It's basically breaking down the poverty issues across the nation, uh, stating that it's not it, foods, giving people food stamps is not the issue with making people too lazy to work. It's the fact that the work out there doesn't really equate 
for people being able to pay for their way, pay their bills. The example given was that if you're given given a, a food subsidy and a housing subsidy uh, to help you take care of things, and those things go away, whatever you were doing before, now you have to add on something to make money for food and housing. And let's say you're already doing some some sort of work, that's more work to find to cover the cost. And if the people who actually are receiving these benefits are elderly or disabled, they can't do serious work, or they really are too old to take care of things, then they can't take on the extra hours. That was a pretty big one that happened over the weekend. We also have uh, Greg Altman of the Altman Brothers. He died this weekend at the age of 69. Uh, Happening late this week was the new word, confifi, which, if you hadn't heard that one, President Trump had a late-night tweet a few days ago that talked about the negative press confifi, which stayed up for about uh, maybe 12, 13 hours until he erased it and asked the people to figure out what confifi was. Of course, the Internet obliged and said a lot of things confifi could have been most of them not so kind to the president. Mr. Met, the mascot for the New York Mets, got caught on video throwing the bird, flipping the middle finger, although technically he only has four fingers, uh, at a fan in a video before a game a few days ago. The reaction to this was that particular Mr. Met, that guy in that costume that day, got fired. Um, the costume not getting punished, but someone else having to wear it, which may be a punishment since the Mets not doing so well this season in Major League Baseball. John Boehner spoke out about what the president is doing for his presidency and says that Donald Trump is basically a disaster, and he's so glad all he gets to do today every day is sit back and fish. He is happy to be out of government, doing non-government things with all the mess going on at the moment. The Giants and the Nationals Nationals had a nice little brawl the other day when... um, one pitcher hit one batter, and all hell broke loot loose. Hunter Strickland popped Bryce Harper in the shoulder. Bryce Harper went after Hunter Strickland, and the the punchline of this is Hunter Strickland's catcher, Buzzer Ponzi, has some history with being hit by pitches for it by Hunter Strickland and did absolutely nothing to uh, assist his pitcher. In fact, when the benches cleared and the brawl went back and forth, he said he wanted nothing to do with it. There were some pretty good big dudes throwing haymakers out there, and he didn't want to take a punch. So there you go. Michael Vick wants to sign a one-day contract to retire as Atlanta Falcon. The Falcons have not said that's going to happen quite yet. Hillary Clinton is taking to the world to complain about what happened in her election and Donald Trump. She gave a speech at her alma mater where she basically said Trump was a very bad dude. She gave some speeches over the weekend which basically said that um, she's blaming the, the DNC and plenty of other people for screwing things up to not get her elected. She's blaming a lot of folks, but she's not being as vocal when she's saying she is to blame. Mary Kay Letourneau got into the news this week as her husband, who, of course, she's famous for sleeping with as a preteen and having kids with him, two kids, actually, uh, filed for separation this week. We thought maybe there was some trouble in paradise with the uh, basically the twenty the ten year marriage of what's going on, and of course two kids, both the kids grown at this point, thinking, well, now the kids are grown, maybe they'll separate. But no, apparently the young man wants to sell marijuana cigarettes and wants to get a license to be a dispensary for marijuana. And having a wife who is a registered sex offender does not do well for your business. So they are legally separating to figure out how to make this thing happen for the business. The family is doing well. Of course, very big news, but late in the scene, so couldn't catch up with the numbers, was the Paris Accords that U.S. President Donald Trump officially withdrew from, making us, um, putting us in concert with great nations like Syria and Nicaragua. And that's it. Essentially, the rest of the world who have been asked to be in this thing are in this thing, except for us now. China stepping up to take in the vacuum of power, air quotes, uh, but most, mostly of leadership and causing and running the conversation on environmental change because right now the United States, the largest power in the world, just stepped out of that spot, allowing someone else to take it over. As we said earlier, Uncle Merkel says maybe they should go along, maybe they'll be going it alone. We'll see. And that concludes the bulk of the and-thens, the ones that didn't make the top 10. We had about 75 of 
conversations uh, posted over the week. So we had a lot of chatter going back and forth, and we thank you so much for being in that. One thing of note for this week that I mentioned in yesterday's uh, daily recap that I didn't think I would mention, but I'll go ahead and mention now, we had the, for the first time uh, something that actually had no response to it whatsoever, and it was the story on Jason Whitlock where he gave his response to LeBron James talking about racism, saying that, well, tomorrow LeBron James doesn't deal with racism because he's rich. Poor people deal with racism. Rich people don't. That got absolutely zero, zero. Nobody cared for that one. So we will definitely not be talking about Jason Whitlock in the future, but we will probably be talking about the Cavs and the Warriors. Of course, Cavs lost game one, which was two days ago on Thursday, uh, to the Warriors and the Warriors up in the series for the NBA Finals. Other than that, that's how we wrapped up the week in conversations. Thank you so much for being a part of all the conversations we had via social media, via the website. Uh, on social media, follow us at Twitter, TH underscore conversation. Follow us on Facebook, this is the conversation.com. And find us at our website, this is the conversation.com for more great things there as well. I'm wrapping this thing up for today. Of course, come Monday, two days from now, you'll see a daily recap that will recap your Friday through Sunday. And of course, five days of recaps for days. And next Saturday, We'll tell you about the top ten and the also the biggest stories we talked about all week together and some other ones that didn't fit the top ten but we think are pretty interesting as well. So I'm Jay Cleveland Payne. More information about my other projects, check out jaycleavenpayne.net. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you can get them all. And make sure you sign up for alerts either on social media or the website to find out when the big conversations are coming out so you can make sure you are a part of those conversations.